It's 3-2 in the end then against the Magpies. Let's get some post-match reaction from Old Trafford and speak to former defender at Manchester United, Steve Bruce. Steve, great to see you. Um, was that a game that in many ways summed up Manchester United's season? Well, it certainly did. I mean, you could see the struggle they had a little bit defensively, which is understandable with the amount of problems that they had there. Uh, but it was a huge improvement of what we've seen two weeks ago, um, where you know where they were so disappointing but today they've showed a bit of resilience and and got on with it and and the youngsters you know who've had a really really break great breakthrough season um have done fantastically well and scored a couple of goals between them you could argue steve i suppose the youngsters have been the biggest plus for united well this it is year. the biggest plus without question uh, the biggest plus has been the introduction of menu who looks a really exciting talent we haven't seen much of ahmed but we've certainly seen a little flash tonight and uh, of course, Ganacho as well is only a, a young player. And let's not forget, Hoyland is only is only 21 as well. So I, I'd class him in that in that category too. So um, all in all, for the young ones, it's been a, a progressive season for them. Actually, Steve, talk about Ahmed. I know he started the campaign with an injury um, and has had his injury problems. But are you surprised he had to wait so long to be given his first Premier League start? Well, I mean, we're not privy to what's gone on behind the scenes, but in that sort of area, United have got a few players, we know, when you, when you think of Rashford, of course, and, and this, that and the other, but it, it, he's been having to be patient to play. I know he had a wonderful season up at Sunderland a few years ago, a couple of years ago, and everybody was raving about him. He's got an enormous talent, and uh, we've seen glimpses of it tonight, which, is, which has been great to watch. How important was it to sign off the Home League campaign with a victory, Steve? Well, I have to say the positivity in the stadium towards the players and the manager was nothing first, nothing short of first class. They've showed again how loyal they are as a support and they were terrific towards the team. Of course, they've got a cup final um, to play in a couple of weeks' time, which, which you're all delighted about. Um, but the atmosphere in the stadium going round the place when the lads finished, and especially towards the manager, who's, you know, he's had to have a sh certain amount of resilience um, because he's had a couple of, <laughs> he's had a, a lot to deal with over the last few weeks or months, and the and the and the guy still sticks his chin out and comes back swinging, which is great, which is great to see. Yeah, uh, what did you make of that address from Eric Ten Hag? Well, I think it, it went down really, really well with everybody concerned. They were really right behind them in the stadium. Of course, there's going to be a few bo boos from the Newcastle end, yeah. um, but they were all really, really behind him. Brilliant stuff, Steve. Good to talk to you. Thank you ever so much. Thank you. Former Manchester United defender and former Newcastle manager, of course, uh, Steve Bruce talking to us live from Old Trafford. So let's have a look back at the key incidents uh, across the 90 minutes. And it started well, of course, uh, for Manchester United at Cobby Minor taking the lead. Uh, uh, the ball got to him. It was all about the, the way he finished it that stood out, Owen. Yeah, but the thing is, when you have a defensive midfield player like Amrabat, when the ball's on the other side, you, sometimes you can just make a forward run. You know, you just make a forward run. Obviously, they've got the back four in there, Les. And, yeah. Um, you see Crap there just pointing to Guimaraes. He's got, he, he's got to pick up Manu, but he doesn't. And then Trippier, you know, Trippier doesn't go to the ball. And, and, and you know what? I look here and sometimes I wonder, does he think he's offside? Because look at him, look at the, the linesman straight yeah. after. And that's why the casual finish. Yeah, so he, he thought he wasn't going to count. Yeah, right. and, and, and so all of a sudden you think, oh, let me just put, oh, stick this in the back of the net. And then you realise he scored a goal because sometimes I, I think a midfield player gets there and, and they, they may panic a little bit. He was so cool and calm with the finish. I was like, wow. And then when you look at it again, he, he, looks, he looks around at the linesman because he thinks he might have been offside and so he just, you know, caresses it into the bottom of the court, uh, back of the net. But um, bad defending from Newcastle, but great finish for him. Yeah, but about the defending, um, we were talking about Kieran Trippi and what he brings to the side, mm -hmm. least of all experience. Yes. Are you surprised in the way that he was caught out? Or was it because of the way the ball got to Minor that he was found wanting at that point? Yeah, it was the, the, the way the ball got to Minor. I, I know that Gimares was supposed to go with him, but then... For me, with someone of his experience, you go to the ball because that's where the danger is. Yeah. If it goes out wide, then it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's more of a difficult finish. But he, he doesn't go to the ball and he, he reacts too late and then the ball's in the back of the net, you're 1-0 down. A lot of that's also timing if you haven't played. You know, he hasn't played, he hasn't been in the back four, they shuffle up, he drops off, he's, he's in between two minds. Once he realises he's in two, it's too late and Les makes a great point. He should have just gone to the ball and tried to, tried to stop it. 
Into the second half, and you, you can understand Eddie Howe would have had a few words with the Newcastle players because they weren't quite at it in the first 45. It only took them four minutes to get level. Yeah, we spoke about it and we said, like, you know, they've just not been at the races. He's actually, we've hardly seen Isaac, and then all of a sudden um, he gets on the ball, plays a great through ball. And great ball from Murphy, and this is an absolute fantastic finish. I can't tell you how good this is because this is a, different, a, a real difficult skill because he's hit this on the outside of his boot. But the momentum takes is a great cross, just gets the outside of his boot on it. It's a great finish to keep that down. I mean, Amarabat makes a bit of a mess of it. Um, but we said about why, why not have a right footer play on the right wing so you can cross the ball? <laughs> yeah. But you know, it's, uh, you just whip it into an area, there's a big gap there. But I'll tell you what, some finish from Gordon, he's brilliant. Just get in at the back post, you know, it's there for you. 11 goals. 10 assists this season in his first full season for, for Newcastle. Yeah, numbers are fantastic and, and his energy and what he brings to the side. And once they scored that goal, you kind of like felt, oh, come on, they can go on and get a few more here. This is, you know, they've had a bit of a telling off in the change rooms. Yeah. They're going to take it on from there. Yeah, a crucial few minutes, actually, which followed. And we saw um, Newcastle have a terrific chance. Isaac's effort was clearly cleared by Amrabat. And moments later, Ahmad was a moment to remember. Yeah, I mean, so, sometimes you've got to hang around the box, it'll come to you, you know. I said that, to, well, I said that to my son and his team, I said, somebody just hang out on the edge of the box, you'll get a shot. <laughs> yeah. Ahmad does that, absolutely hits it, as clean as you can hit a ball. I mean, it has to be said, a poor header for Murphy, yeah. who, who should clear that in the near post, but it goes across the thing. But look at this, as he, as he strikes it, the ball stops oscill oscillating, it just, you know, just takes the sting out of it, and just goes clean, he won't, he won't strike one cleaner than that. Absolute fantastic strike. I like the fact Kobe Mine, he doesn't over celebrate. <laughs> and, no, he, he's so chill. I like yeah, that. Yeah. You know, he, like he deserves it. And like Ahmad as well, you know, that you can tell the boys they have confidence in yeah. themselves and belief. And I think that's what you need as a United player. You need a bit of belief, you know, yeah. on that big stage. He looks, he looks comfortable wearing a United shirt. Great outing from him against Newcastle with a goal and an assist. I mean, same question that I asked Steve Owen to you. Are you surprised he's had to wait so long? It was only the other day the other game that he had to make his Premier League his first start yeah I think probably a lot of United fans are probably surprised but when you pay 90 million for Anthony you know you're probably going to have to, you're going to have to play him so you can figure out what the plan is uh, this season and next but uh, you know you think about all the players you know Man United still have Jay and Sancho by the way is in the Champions League final oh. you know the, the Marcus Rashford who's on his day is an, an unbelievable player you know Bruno Fernandes Hoyland they've got a lot of you know Parts, so I'm not surprised it's been tough for him to find minutes. But I think he's playing now so they can figure out what's the plan for next season. Because mm. you need to play him and then you can make a plan for some of these young guys. Yeah. Uh, Manchester United built on their lead. They made it 3-1. 140 seconds after coming off the bench. Rasmus Hoyland. Yeah, we spoke a lot about him before the game. I um, was surprised to not see him in the, in the starting lineup, But um, gets onto the pitch and he gets his opportunity. Uh, you know, Great ball here from uh, Fernandez just through the legs. And then here he shows a lot of calm. And for someone who hasn't scored goals in 10, yeah. takes that well, one in 10, well. one, in, one yeah. in 10, sorry. Um, great ball from Fernandez here through the legs of uh, Joe Linton. And then Hoyland does the rest, goes through the legs of the defender as well, Hall, but, um, and, and blindsides the goalkeeper. And that is exactly what he needed. It's almost the perfect kind of cameo performance, isn't it, from Hoyland? Well, he, he looks like a goal scorer there to me. Yeah. <laughs> Shift, bang. Holds off, with, holds off the defender. With your right foot. Yeah. I think, see, the thing I like, he's got real, like, he's got like that spirit in him, you know, he's like a bit of a Viking, you know, I like that. I think you need that when it's difficult, you need people to fight against it. Mm. Um, and he'll do that. And they just got to surround him with people that are going to create some chances for him. I think he could score... 25, 30 goals next season. If he, yeah, if he gets a bit of service. And he, I think he just needs to play consistently. You know, stop taking him out and saying, oh, he needs a rest or he needs this. You know, if he's fit, give him a little run and let him work with some people that he's going to create chances from consistently. I'm sure, Les, when you were at your best, mm. you knew who was crossing it from the right or who was crossing it from the left. Whereas he has kind of different, it looks like he has different partnerships all the time. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's one of those where, as a centre forward, you're only as good as the people around you. You know, to score goals, you need people to provide opportunities for you, and he's not had a lot of that in recent weeks. Yeah. But, you know, we've seen from Manchester United plenty of times this season where a lead has been narrowed, and it's a kind of nervy uh, kind of sprint to the finish line. Lewis Hall. Reduce the arrears to make it 3-2 with three minutes left on the clock. 
and a brief glimmer of hope as far as the visitors are concerned. Yeah, you know, he, he, he's coming to the side and there's a lot of talk about the money that they've paid for him, but again, he won't, swi- he won't strike one as sweet as that. You know, absolutely great strike. Goalkeeper's got no chance and then you thought, oh, could they go on and get the, get the sort of like equaliser, but um, it wasn't to be, but this is a fantastic strike. Just takes his time, lines it up and bang, we're back at it. You always get scraps like that at the edge of the box because yeah. people it's hard for them to head it hard away if you yeah. just wait take a touch brilliant goal from Lewis Hall. again you know big money signing from Chelsea hasn't really played much not many of Newcastle signings have played much have they yeah. Tonali obviously had the situation that he did um, but I think when they get everybody back fit and healthy in Newcastle next season they're you know they're going to be a problem again she got a glimpse as well of Manchester United in 8th place going into the final weekend of the season 3 points off Chelsea in 6th there is still a chance via the league to claim European football. Yeah. Um, and to be honest, you know, they've got silverware possibly to go for as well. You know, I suppose the ultimate positive outlook is a, a, a trophy in the cabinet and European football next season. That'd make it for a pretty decent campaign, although City stand in their way. Oh, definitely. I, I think the only, the only problem now is you look at that table, you've got City in a, probably Arsenal and then you've got about six teams, they all seem like they're at a, a similar level. So you used to have the big four. Now we've got like a, it was a big six, now it's a big eight. <laughs> yeah, you know, so it's, right, yeah. you, you know, if you have a bad season, you, you drop right down to that eighth. Whereas I think for United, they need to get recruitment right, bounce back, get into the Champions League. Yeah. All right, well, we've been speaking about him at length after his terrific performance today uh, with his goal and assist. And I'm delighted to say young Ahmed Diallo uh, joins us live from Old Trafford. I'm a very well done today. I mean, first of all, on the win itself, Thank you. I mean, that was a perfect way to sign off, right? For, for your last home league game of the season? Yeah, uh, last games uh, of, the, of the season. And uh, yeah, I think uh, today the team was motivated to, get me to, to play this game. And I see my teammates fighting for everyone. And yeah, we was happy to win the last game at home. And you're still clearly smiling, and why not? Your first Premier League goal for Manchester United. Just talk us through it if you can. Yeah, uh, my first goal of Premier League for Manchester United, and I helped to score more goals for Manchester United. So I was happy for myself, but the most important thing is uh, was to win today. So when the ball comes to you from the set piece, you clearly had only one thing on your mind. Yeah, uh, in the first half I tried to to make the same but I didn't score and the second chance I say why, why not and I tried to, to shoot and I score I was happy How special was that moment for you Ahmed? Yeah good moment um, I work hard for this moment to, to waiting my chance uh, so this season was not easy for me I got injured in pre-season and uh, yeah scoring this goal in last 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 games at home was a big big big, big feeling for me Interesting you there you know, speak about waiting for your chance. How patient have you had to be to get that first start? Yeah, I was uh, waiting for a long time. Yeah, but yeah, no, uh, uh, I go step by step. You know, uh, I, I, I was waiting this chance for a long time. And today, um, um, I think uh, the most important thing was to, to win. Ahmad, I just want to say congratulations. I know it's been a difficult season, obviously, with injury and having to be so patient, but nice to see you smiling and, and dribbling and scoring and creating goals because uh, you have such a talent in there and just hope we get to see you play a little bit more. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ahmad, has it given you a taste for more for next season? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I am focused for the next game. <laughs> yeah. And and two big games left of this season, of course, Um, not just uh, on the final Sunday of the campaign, but have you possibly put yourself in the reckoning for Wembley? Yeah, uh, two two, two games left against Brighton and the final against City. So uh, we need to be focused for the the Brighton and after the game uh, we we are focused for the City. But I think uh, we need to go step by step. You know, this season was not easy for the team and, you know, we, we need to go step by step. Finally, what was the message from the manager when you've just gone into the dressing room after tonight's game? Yeah, he said he was happy for me. Uh, he said I deserve uh, everything. Uh, so, uh, he, was, uh, he was uh, happy for me. 
Ahmad, I have to say, we are really delighted to see you make your um, impact at Manchester United during these latter stages of the campaign. Uh, well done. Good luck Thank with you so two much. games left Thank of your you. season. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Ahmed Diallo. What a charming young guy, right? Yeah, really charming. Um, really nice interview. And as you said, like you know, there must have been a load of frustration for him to to get injured in pre-season and then come back there and have to wait for his time to get into the side. And you know, he tops it off tonight with a with a fantastic goal and a fantastic strike. But throughout the game, defended really well as well. Yeah. And you know, if there's been one word to describe him so far since he's made this impact, is he's a bit of a live wire, right? Yeah, the thing, the thing I liked about that interview is well, he, you can tell he's a humble young man. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you need, a little, you need to be humble at times because it's hard. You have to be patient. Sometimes you're, you're not going to play, but you wait for that chance. And, but then you've got to take it, you know. And I think he's got confidence. He's got talent. Um, but I really, I, I love that interview because if, you, if you're talented and humble... Um, you're going to go, I think, a, a long way. But he just needs people around him to help him and mentor him. But this young man can play. He's really good in tight air. He's a good dribbler off that right-hand side. He wants to come in and link it. A um, bit like Jaden, really, in that sense. You know, he, he, he's a really, really tidy footballer. And you, when he plays like that, if he plays like that goal and says he's going to get more reps, he's going to get more opportunities because, you know, he... he you're right, Manish. He's a live wire. He makes things happen. He throws himself about. And United fans want that. Give me, give me your best. And he did that today and he was terrific. I mean, this is the highlight of him. You know, he was smiling from ear to ear in that interview, wasn't he? But, and he deserved it because he, he's a player. Full of energy. Full of energy up and down, up and down. We, talk, we, we spoke about Gordon for, 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 for Newcastle and his energy and what he provides to the side. And he does exactly the same for Manchester United. Lots of energy. Um, wants to go at people, take people on, get shots off and and create chances for other people as well as taking his own tonight. Well, let's see if his head coach talks about him. Here are the post-match thoughts of the United head coach, Eric Ten Hag. Well, Eric, I wanted to start by asking you actually about the supporters, because through all the sort of scrutiny and criticism, they've been there and they felt like they swung right behind you personally tonight. Did you feel that? I think... Um, we had a difficult season, but one thing was constant. Uh, they remained being with us, uh, backing the team in all the difficult moments. And yeah, we are very pleased with it. And yeah, we want to pay them back. Why did you think it was important to address them, to speak to them sort of personally? As, so last game, but it's um, finished the season. Yeah, still two games to go, but away from Old Trafford. And yeah, we want to, to thank them for yeah, keeping with us, uh, sticking with us. And I uh, really appreciate that. Uh, the team appreciates that. The whole club appreciates that. We are in difficult times. We, have a, we are in a transition in this club. And the results are not what they can, could expect. Uh, we also had our, our reasons for it. And with all the injuries, uh, but still, uh, they have had a yeah, disappointing season, as we had. Was tonight maybe a light at the end of the tunnel performance? Three young players scored, players back from injury. Do you know what I mean? After some real tough times, just a little kind of bit of light in the horizon where maybe some good times are ahead. Uh, I, I'm very pleased. So we had in uh, the last months, we had many games where we... Uh, put ourselves in winning positions, but then we couldn't draw it off the line. Had also to do with our uh, back four, and uh, we didn't have options there, also not to sub. And today, then is uh, yeah, very good that we can bring Licha Martinez, um, an experienced player, a warrior, and that helps the team in such difficult moments. Uh, I must ask you about another experienced player because we've asked you about him when it hasn't gone so well. But Casemiro tonight, I think played a very good game and uses his experience, his calmness. Um, so, yeah, very pleased with, the, with his performance today. Uh, what about the, the three goal scorers? Three young goal scorers, again, a, a vision for the future, maybe? Yeah, I thought just about uh, this, this club is in a transition and we have had a, a disappointed season, uh, that is, uh, that's clear. But in this disappointment, how we progress some players, some good young players, as Hoyland, as uh, Diallo, uh, as Canaccio, as Kobe Mano. And it's good that uh, three are on the uh, Skorsky uh, sheet. How important is it you, that you win that cup final? And do you think that will give a different sort of impression of the whole season? If you, if you could, I know, and I know the task is massive. I don't talk about this moment, about FA Cup final. And, uh, we have to talk about Brighton. 
and um, leave this behind, uh, go further. The next game is Brighton, it's the most important game. And then we will focus us on the FA Cup final. OK, I want to ask you another question though about the future. If the club sticks with you, Eric, and they've been in this cycle for a while now of changing the manager every couple of years, if they, could, if they stick with you, if they back you with what you know about the players and the squad and the progress, where can you take this club? Given the backing, uh, that is, um, I can't answer tonight this question. Why not? Be- because it's a very long answer. Well, we've got, and, and, we've and, got time. And, I've done already long interviews and, tonight. I, I know, <laughs> but I don't think this is the right moment to to talk about this. I have to to talk about next game, and then after that game, uh, it's coming uh, a really good game, a great final, and that is a huge achievement. Uh, even in a disappointed season, uh, we are uh, in the FA Cup final, and we have to enjoy it. And of course, we have to go there for winning. Well, that was an interesting end to the interview, talking about whether he'd be given backing um, in terms of recruitment uh, for the next season over the summer. He didn't commit to it, so obviously it leaves it slightly ambiguous. But what do you take from that, and how do you think he handled that interview in the end? I think he did really well, because when you're you're there after a game, emotions are really high, and the interviewers are really skilled at getting stuff out of you when you don't want to say anything. And I actually You've been there by any chance. (laughs) And I think he did incredibly well to actually not really say anything in, in that sense. I know people want to hear something in the moment, but he's right. Right now, it's a high you won. Mm. You know, and potentially you can finish the season and win a trophy. But actually, his future is probably still up in the air in, in, in some ways. He probably knows that. The club was probably still debating, depending on how they finish the season. But I thought he did a, a good job kind of rallying the troops with that speech, uh, being the leader of the football club, saying thank you to the fans, the last home game of the season. But then also not getting caught up in, a, a, you know, giving away anything in those interviews after the game. Well done. As you said, it could have been easy for him to, to, to lose his, his rag a little bit there. We've but seen a lot of managers. Yeah, we've seen a lot of managers do that very recently. Uh, but it was, it, it was interesting because he knows, as he said, he's got two games. The cup final's a massive game for him. So to now talk about, no, oh, I don't know what my future's going to be, the, the guys in the change rooms are now knowing that you, you might not be the manager next year. Yeah. Whether they think it or not, if yeah. you come out and say, I don't know what the situation is going to be, that's, that's a real downside to yeah. you going into a, in, into a cup final. And if he's not willing to look ahead, what do you two think? Is Terry Hag's future at Old Trafford for next season? I mean, looking at the way Manchester United have been this season, and, and you know, I'm taking the injuries into to, to account and the way that they've performed, I would say no. Um, but, you know, they've got new owners in there wanting to do different things and um, I don't think they've guaranteed him that he's going to be there next year. Mm. Um, I'd be very surprised if he was there as manager next year, but the question is, if he's not, who do you go and get? If they win the FA Cup final against Manchester City, could that make all the difference? Oh, yeah, 100%. If they, if they beat Man City, he'll be there. I don't, I don't think there'll be any doubt about that. So do you think... So Jim Ratcliffe will be holding on for Wembley and then making a decision? Yeah, probably. Right. I think the wait and see. Depends. If, if you win that good, great. If, if you lose it in a bad way, you know, then there'll probably be some problems. Why would you upset the apple cart now? You, you know, you're, you're two games away from Wembley. Or I say two games, you, you've got one more game and then you've got Wembley. Why would you upset the apple cart right now? OK. So Manchester United in the end boosting their European hopes. It's a setback, though, that defeat for Newcastle. Let's get the post-match thoughts of their head coaches, Eddie Howe. Well, Eddie, you certainly had enough chances to win the football match. Is that your chief frustration or a few other bits and pieces as well? Well, I think, yeah, a combination of we had enough chances to to do more. But also the way we defended the three goals wasn't good enough. And um, this season, compared to last, that's probably been the biggest difference. We've conceded goals similar to the, the type that we did today, which is uncharacteristic for us. Something we have to change longer term going into next year. Yeah, with the first goal, you said before the match, Kieran Trippi hadn't trained much. I feel like that's something, if he's not quite so rusty with a few more miles in the legs, he's not sort of caught in like that. Agree or not? I, I, I'm reluctant to focus on one player. I think uh, when you look back through the goals we've conceded today, I think there's multiple errors in all three goals. Um, I don't think Manchester United really hurt us a great deal. But they've conceded three goals. I mean, uh, that you can't do away from home. We looked... Good, I thought going forward we did create chances. We probably didn't get enough bodies in the box in the key moments during that first half. They thought the goalkeeper made some saves. The woodwork denied us in the second half. But we scored two goals. That should be enough to get something from the game. Yeah, it's the timing of the second goal, a real killer. Because you came out in the second half really strongly, got level, 
and really from their first attack of the second half you found yourself back behind yeah you feel the momentum's with us you feel at 1-1 we're going to go on and win the game um, yeah there's a much better feel about us in the second half I thought we were prepared to make things happen rather than wait for the things to happen uh, and the second goal from a set play uh, look as I said it's a combination of errors it's not about one person and we know we have to do better from that situation so was that the, the, the half time message then just a bit more front foot a bit more taking of the initiative yeah I thought we were good in the first half without being as good as we needed to to, to get the goal that would have turned the game in our favour um, I thought we were a little bit reactive instead of more proactive uh, which we were in the second half we created numerous opportunities from, from high pressing regains um, we looked a lot better we scored and yeah everything was with us in that moment that said in the first half you had a very strong looking penalty appeal that certainly cost Anthony Gordon like half his sock your view I thought it was a penalty I think it's one of those you have to see two or three times to see where the contact is and that's what I thought VAR was good at you know slowing it down and, and making sure you can see where the the contacts happened. You can see why Anthony's gone down. I think if you're looking at it from the wrong angle, you possibly don't see it. But for me, it was clear. Well, what is your take on VAR, Eddie? I'm only, I only asked the broader question because the suggestion today that the Premier League clubs will vote on scrapping it. Yeah, I've always been in an era that the referee makes the decision, and I'd still back that, even if it means we don't get penalties like today. Because um, I think there are more positives than negatives. Oh, right, so you would, if, you, if it was left to you, you'd take it away? Yeah, I'd possibly keep it for offsides, um, but uh, I'd like more power with the referees. OK, so final day, if you win, very good chance you'd be playing European football next season. You'd have taken that, wouldn't you, during the dark months of the winter with all those injuries? Yeah, I get asked these questions a lot where you're sort of hypothetically putting yourself in the situation. Um, I don't know. In this moment, we're just disappointed not to win today. We felt it was an opportunity for us to grab Europe rather than be looking around at other results. Um, but that's what we'll have to do. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Interesting the thoughts there of Eddie Howe. Newcastle in the end, of course, losing by the odd goal, which is why he feels clearly a penalty that wasn't given could have proven cru uh, crucial come the 90 minutes as far as the visitors are concerned. So let's have a look then at that incident. And we've got a glimpse of it there during the interview. This is at 1-0 to Manchester United. A combination of Casemiro and Amrabat on Anthony gordon -Les. Yeah, and listen, you're looking at the... the when we first heard about it, we thought, uh, Casemiro, has he, has he got the ball? You can see clearly he has, but there Amrabat is... Gordon doesn't go down off of uh, Casemiro's challenge. He goes down off of Amrabat's challenge. And we've been privy to seeing what's in the VAR rooms on, on, a, on a match day. On occasions, they've shown us the amount of people that are in there looking at these incidents. <laughs> How they don't see that, none of them see that, I don't know. Impossible. I mean, brilliant challenge from Casemiro. Yeah. And to be fair, you said it was Casemiro and Amrabat. It was all Amrabat's <laughs> mess, to be fair. Yeah. No, but it feels like the decision was made on the Casemiro challenge. I think you're right. I think they said to Marco, look at it and think, oh, the tackle's really good. But actually, that hurts, by the way. When somebody oh, stands on your Achilles like that, that is, it's such a, you know... Well, it's a delicate part. Yeah. Super delicate yeah. area, and that hurts. And that's why you saw Gordon's reaction. It was like, you know, that, that hurts. You know, I'm sure he said something different than what I said. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, the, but the point is... Thanks how, for keeping it clean, uh, how, Yeah, but how do you not give a penalty there? And that's why VAR is probably, might get scrapped next season, because if you can't see that, you've got the ref, the assistants, you've got the fourth official, so there's four of you, there's another couple guys around there, that's six, and then you've got other guys upstairs, and you're still not getting it, it's like, I, yeah, that's... On a Monday, I'd love to be in one of those meetings and say, guys, how did we miss that? How did, how, how did we not get that right? It's easy. OK, uh, well, if that was a pretty uh, hard or challenging to work out, um, what about the race for Europe? I mean, there's obviously going to be a fair few permutations as far as this is concerned. So we know Spurs are going to play European football next season. Um, that's been confirmed. They only need a point now on the final day when they go away to already relegated Sheffield United to play in the Europa League. Um, Chelsea are one point away from Europe themselves. Um, they host Bournemouth. Newcastle need to win and hope Chelsea lose for them to make Europe. <laughs> Manchester United are also in the mix for Europa Conference League. How about Chelsea almost level on points with Tottenham, by the way? No way. That's incredible. That is mad. <laughs> and what an unbelievable and they, finish. They, they That's a, almost kind of crept up on everybody. I know they've had such a bad season, haven't they? Jeez, yeah. it's unbelievable. They, you know, they could finish up right up there with, with, with Spurs. They're in pole position, aren't they? Chelsea, yeah. really. Yeah. You know, Bournemouth at home. Form-wise and everything else. They'll, uh, I expect Chelsea to win that, finish the season strong. Look, Cole Palmer might even be in for shout-out player of the year. Yeah. You know, what a season he is. Unbelievable. Having. 
Yeah. Actually, talking of which, after the break here on Match Day Live, we'll be seeing how Cole Palmer played his part in changing.